It can be said that the most influential time period for the development of the tank was that of World War II and the years building up to it. No discussion about the history of these vehicles can go without mentioning those that gained immense fame from the war, such as the T-34, Panzer IV, and the Sherman, and the design doctrines of the nations that built them. This is especially the case when it comes to heavy tanks, the lumbering beasts made to gain easy superiority on the battlefield. Arguably the most famous is the Tiger, developed by Germany and used in an attempt to counter the mass-produced T-34. However, there is another nation that is often not brought up in these discussions, likely due to the perceived insufficiency of their designs. This nation is Italy, whose military prowess and equipment has become the butt of more than a few jokes. While there were many Italian armored vehicles developed, it sometimes comes as a shock that the Italians had operated their own heavy tanks. However, this is not very surprising given that by the time the vehicle in question was envisioned, it was not large or heavy enough to be considered one by any of the major powers which had joined the war. This heavy tank was known as the Caro Armato P26-40 and along with its variants sought to be Italy's recipe for their own battle-winning vehicle. Speaking of winning battles, with the help of today's sponsor, War Thunder, you can start winning battles of your own. You obviously like tanks if you're watching these videos, and War Thunder has over 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships for you to command. These include everything from the famous tanks I mentioned in the intro, such as the Tiger, T-34, and Sherman, all the way down to largely forgotten vehicles like the P-40, as we'll discuss today. All of these vehicles feature detailed models and have everything from the crew to the machine guns modeled in-game, creating the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever. What's the price for all that? War Thunder is actually free to play, meaning trying the game out costs you nothing and it is available cross-platform for you to download on PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, as well as Xbox One and Xbox Series X or S. Use my link below to download War Thunder while you watch the rest of this video, and you'll get a special bonus pack including premium vehicle rentals, premium time, and more to get you started. Thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring, now let's learn about Italy's heavy tank program. When it comes to the tank design and strategy of major nations during the interwar period and World War II, there will always be two nations that stand out from the others due to the major differences in their armored vehicles. These are, of course, Italy and Japan, whose armored vehicles are often out of the regular sphere of tank design when compared to those of other combatants. This was especially the case with the P-2640 as it was nowhere near similar to other heavy tank designs of the war. However, it is important to understand the backstory as to why they created these designs in order to better understand why the P-2640 was designed the way it was. Up until the invention of aircraft, the entire military history of Italy from Rome to World War I has been concentrated on conflicts and invasions that originated at sea or through the northern territory that connects the peninsula with the rest of Europe. This territory can be said to have been a great benefit to the Italian states throughout history due to the presence of the largest mountain range in Europe covering nearly the entirety of the region. However, this great benefit would not last long as Europe modernized and saw the expansion of the French and Austrian empires into the Italian states. This would carry on into the 20th century with the Italian front of World War I that many of you are likely aware of. Within this war, combat was nearly exclusively within high-altitude mountainous regions with rocky valleys in between. Following the end of the war, this region would take precedence within the realm of the Italian tank designers. In fact, the mountainous territories were so ingrained in Italian tank design that you could say the Reggio Esercito became obsessed with vehicles that could handle the terrain during the 1920s and 30s. This restricted the dimensions of the vehicles as they had to be able to cross small mountain bridges, have as little weight as possible, and have the ability to have good cross-country performance. 
There was also another strange choice by the army in that these tanks were expected to not have a range that would exceed 100 kilometers and instead be brought to battle on trailers, trains, or trucks. Combining this with the lack of extensive automotive industry like in Germany, France, or Britain, this meant that Italy was forced to rely on only two companies, Fiat and Ansaldo, and be restricted to producing small vehicles. One of the most well-known of these was the L335 Caro Veloce, a small tankette that was crewed by two men and armed mainly with machine guns. As seen here, the prototype of the Caro Veloce was perfect for the Northern Territories and their cramped conditions and showed exactly what the dogma of early Italian tank design was built on. This dogma would continue into the early projects in the 1930s, especially with their first medium tank known as the Caro M11. The design of the M11 started in 1936 with the request by the army for a breakthrough tank that would be able to carry a 37mm gun in the hull, two 8mm machine guns in the turret, and be able to survive both small arms and 20mm cannon fire. The resulting tank was an interesting take on a medium tank, only being 11 tons with an SPA 8T V8 engine producing 105 horsepower. This gave it a top speed of 33.9 km per hour and an expected speed of 14 km an hour over rough terrain, which is similar to other tanks of the era. Its width was also slightly smaller than other medium tanks of the era, being 2.3 meters, and it carried through with the earlier mentioned requirement of being able to be towed on a trailer with its own specially designed one being seen here. This tank would have aspects that would become the distinctive features of Italian designs throughout the entirety of World War II. These included the lack of major angling on the front of the tank and most notably the usage of bolts to mount the vehicle's armored plates. Many will make the claim that the Italians used rivets for their tanks, but this is a misconception likely fueled by the similarities in how a bolt or rivet look externally, especially in grainy photos. This construction method was due to the aforementioned lack of significant industry and this led to welding being rarely seen on their vehicles. Looking at the M11, it was obvious that the tank was mainly suitable for infantry support and would largely be incapable of significant confrontations with enemy tanks. This would lead to the development of the M11 to meet the request by the army for a medium that was able to house the standard 47mm AT gun in a fully rotating turret with a top speed of 35 km an hour, at most a four-man crew, and a cross-country range of 12 hours. This request would be fulfilled by Ansaldo with the first prototype of what would become the M1340 using the same chassis as the M11. As to be expected, the army requested changes and in 1940 the first 250 tanks were available and sent to Libya in the fight against the British. This tank was heavier by 3 tons with a total weight of 14 tons and featured a redesigned frontal plate. In addition, the interior was more roomy for the crew and the turret itself was redesigned to house a 47mm but lacked a turret basket and used oil pressure to provide power traverse. The armor was significantly improved with 30mm on the front of the turret and hull nose, 25mm on all other plates except for the roof at 15mm and the belly at 6mm. Unfortunately for the Italians, the developments made for the creation of the M1340 would not be enough when used in combat in the desert. A combination of issues with the engine and the desert conditions combined with engagements with the British led to most being captured or destroyed. The difficulties faced by the M13 would lead to the development of further tanks including the M1441 and M1542, however it would be the other development of the M13's design that we will be focusing on, the P2640. Due to the focus on tanks being able to handle the mountainous terrain of northern Italy firmly ingrained in Italian tank design doctrine, it can be understood why they had not worked on heavy tanks like other nations. They had created one heavy in World War I known as the Fiat 2000, but this was completely opposite to what Italy would later become known for with it actually being larger than many tanks of its time. 
The vehicle was 40 tons and was an impressive 7.4 meters long and was especially unique as it was one of the only tanks at the time to incorporate a fully rotating turret armed with a 65 millimeter field gun. Only two of the 50 ordered were completed and it saw no combat in World War I, but was used in Libya and quickly retired due to its poor top speed of only 4 kilometers an hour. One running replica was completed in 2020 and is currently housed at Montecchio Maggiore near Vicenza. Following the Fiat 2000, the heavy tank concept fell out of favor within the Italian army due to its incompatibility with their doctrine. It was not until 1938 that the idea would return, however still not anywhere near other nations' definitions of heavy tanks. This idea was for a 20-ton tank that would be able to reach a top speed of 32 km an hour, have a turret housing a 47mm AT gun, and have a total of three machine guns. This would change in 1940 when it was officially ordered by Mussolini that this tank project be continued. The new order was different due to the turret now requiring a 75mm gun and a 20mm coax, a weight of 25 tons, a crew of 5, and be equipped with 3 to 4 machine guns. Two different design mock-ups were produced, with two by Ansaldo and one by the army itself. The one chosen was by Ansaldo, which had a silhouette strikingly similar to an enlarged M13 M14 with machine guns on either side of the hull and a 20mm coaxial on the left side of the main 75mm gun. The driver was situated between the two machine guns with an enclosed protrusion from the hull. The design was chosen to have a V12 diesel engine capable of producing 330 horsepower with 40 millimeters of frontal armor. Arguably expected by now from Ansaldo with their previous history of reusing existing vehicles, the prototype created in 1941 was built on the chassis of the M1340 and as previously mentioned, it was essentially a larger version of the tank. As can be seen in the picture, the model 7518 was a very stubby cannon and it was decided to replace it with a longer version known as the 7532 which can be seen at the bottom. It was also decided that the 20mm would be replaced by an 8mm coaxial and that two hull machine guns would be mounted more similarly to the M13 in one casemate on the right hand side of the vehicle. Looking at this tank, you would be correct in questioning just how this design evolved into the final vehicle. This change would follow the invasion of the Soviet Union by the Germans who had captured many T-34s and gave some to Italy for study. Upon examining these tanks, it was decided that the P-26 would adopt sloped armor and have its armor increased to 50mm on the front and to 40mm on the sides. Nearly the entire vehicle above the lower chassis would be changed, with the front hull doing away with the machine gun port, the sides becoming a more sloped shape, the engine and rear area also becoming more sloped, and the turret itself becoming larger in order to house a further improved version of the previously mentioned 75mm, the model 7534. Despite these impressive changes for the tank on paper, Italian construction still lacked the ability to weld their armored plates, resulting in the P-26 relying on bolts like its predecessors. With these changes, it made the tank heavier from its original design, raising it from 20 tons to 26, and led to the engine no longer being suitable for power. While early production versions of the tank still retained the original V12 diesel engine, the others were equipped with another V12, but this time it would be a gasoline engine that produced 420 horsepower. The second prototype, which incorporated these changes and can be seen here, was produced in the summer of 1942 and was received well by the army enough to order 500 tanks. With this order, the tank would be given the name P-40, but is often called the P-2640 due to the common Italian designations based on the weight and the year it was commissioned. In the final design that would be produced, the tank weighed 26 tons and had a top speed of 40 km an hour with a crew of 4. Interestingly enough, this vehicle was equipped with an electromechanical turret traverse system unlike the M13 and had a standard RF1CA radio system of many of the Italian tanks. One additional thing added during development was a new cooling system for the engine. 
This was actually modeled after the system on the Crusader which Italy had faced in North Africa and was one of a few British inspired designs on the vehicle. Before the P-40 even began proper production in the middle of 1943, the army was already deeming it inferior to other nations' designs and looking at how to improve it. What they had in mind was a vehicle known as the P-43 and was a continuation of another heavy tank project that had begun in 1941 as a larger version of the regular P-40. Originally, this tank was to be 30 tons and have significantly better armor of up to 80 mm and be armed with the long barreled 75 mm of the production P 40 or a larger 105 mm cannon. The design would evolve to become a tank more fitting of the designation of a heavy with an increased armor value of 80 to 100 mm and have a top speed of 30 km an hour through the use of a more powerful 480 horsepower Maybach engine. The issue with this vehicle is that there is confusion that has arisen from the muddy history that envelops the later years of the P2640 program and that there is not clear information about the P43. One of the major issues is the reported existence of two different developments of the P-40, the P-43 BIS and what has been called the P-40 BIS, with both supposedly having a 90mm cannon based on the Canona de 9053 anti-aircraft gun. This other tank was reportedly a side project of Ansaldo and was to be a tank with 50 to 60 millimeters of armor with a weight of 34 tons, very different from the P-43's final design. It is reported that the P-40 BIS had a wooden mock-up created and it is possible that the P-40 BIS has been mistaken for the P-43 or the P-43 has been mistaken for the P-40 BIS. Nevertheless, neither design would see production due to the surrender of the Italians as part of the armistice in 1943. Another development of the P-40 was in an opposite direction to that of the P-43 and was known as the Semivente 14940. The idea of this vehicle was that it would be a self-propelled gun equipped with a 149mm artillery piece. This project was also reportedly a side project of Ansaldo and was to have the benefits of a regular self-propelled gun combined with the ability to carry a much more powerful gun than other SPGs of the Italian forces. It is reported that the gun only took 3 minutes to prepare for action as compared to the standard towed gun that took at least 17 minutes. Although based on the P-40's hull, it was completely different in reality due to the need to remove nearly everything above the lower hull to allow for the mounting of the gun. The process of creating the 14940 was similar to that of the German Ferdinand in that the engine was moved to the front of the vehicle. However, the similarities end there with there being no protection for any of the crew outside of the driver. Upon reaching its firing position, two supports would be deployed behind the hull and the gun would be raised. The SPG was also incapable of storing ammunition so required a support vehicle to be present. Only one of these vehicles was made and there are no confirmed reports of it being used in action after being captured by the Germans. The sole example currently exists in the United States at the U.S. Army Field Artillery Museum in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Unfortunately for the P-2640, its history would not be as revered as the heavy tanks of its German allies. At the time of the armistice signed with the Allies, Ansaldo had only produced a few tanks, sources range from 21 to 22 total, with the number consisting of a few pre-production models and the standard designs. Many of these vehicles were at varying stages of completion and there are reports that some were used to act as defenses around the area of Rome. Following the seizure of the Ansaldo factory by the German forces still in Italy, production was ordered to resume and this increased the amount produced to just over 100. It has been reported that many of these vehicles, numbering around 40 out of the 101 produced at Ansaldo, did not have engines and many turrets were used as static bunkers throughout the Italian front. At least one of these turrets can be seen here with the cannon swapped with a German short 75mm. By the middle of 1944, the Waffen-SS had received 14 tanks and were used on the border of Italy and Yugoslavia. By the end of 1944, over 45 were in use by the Germans in Italy as well as remaining pro-Mussolini forces. 
However, it was found that the tanks were unreliable due to their Fiat engines and unable to be used due to an endless need for maintenance. As such, they were taken away from the front lines and given to police units for general anti-partisan and policing operations. Specific combat reports are scarce, and it is unknown how effective the tanks were when or if they were used against Allied forces. Two P-40s were put into service as part of the Leoncello Armored Group and reportedly may have participated in several battles. When looking at the P-2640, it can be said that it is one of the vehicles in this series that was truly cursed not just by its design, but by where it was designed. Firstly, Italian design doctrine after the First World War, combined with their lack of significant automotive industry, had largely hampered their ability to develop vehicles that would be effective in the coming war, although they cannot be fully blamed for this fact, as they had no idea what kind of war that World War II would become in the early 20s. Secondly, although the tank had many good aspects on paper, it was heavily limited by the inclusion of bolted armor and a gun that was no longer suitable for the combat expected of a heavy tank by the time it was actually produced. Overall, while the P-2640 was a promising design for the early stages of the war, the delayed and complicated development process for the vehicle, combined with its overall nature more similar to other nations' medium tanks than a heavy tank, and its low production numbers, proved to make the vehicle an embodiment of the term, too little, too late, as many vehicles seen in this series. Despite the small number being completed, two still survive to this day, with one at the Museo della Motizaziano in Rome, and another near an army barracks in Lecce. So what do you think of Italy's heavy tank? Let me know down in the comments. While you're down there, remember to use my link to try out War Thunder to get that free sign-up bonus. I want to give a special thanks to Baron Von Teapot for his work on researching and writing the script for this video, as well as to Nico for helping me make a few corrections and additions to it. If you have an interest in Italian vehicles, you can also check out his Discord server, which I'll link below. It's only with the help of people like them that allows me to both increase the number of videos I can create for you, while still keeping the information as historically accurate as possible. Thanks to all of you for watching, and to my YouTube members who support the channel. That's all I have for you today, I hope to see you in the next video.